Today I'm gonna to be rating new drugstore makeup. So I've been testing out all of these new holiday releases over the past couple of weeks and I'm ready to share my thoughts with you. I thought it would be fun to rate these out of 10 with one being the worst, 10 being the best. And that way you can get a good idea of whether or not these are worth purchasing or whether they're worth skipping. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and just jump right in and get started. All right, so let's start with Wet n Wild. They have a new holiday collection called Holiday Foxtrot. I saw these over on the Ulta website. I ordered a couple of things. I didn't get the entire collection because there were a few things that just really didn't appeal to me, but I did want to try a sampling of what they had. So I got two out of the three eyeshadow palettes. I guess we'll start here. And they had one that kind of had some pink tones and then one that was more neutral and it had some green and red. And funny enough, there were two that actually looked incredibly similar, this one and then another one. And I didn't get that one just because because I felt like it would be a little bit redundant. So these are $7.99 each and they are 10 pan eyeshadow palettes. And Jolly Berry Jumper is the one that has all of the pink tones in it. You have some brighter pops of pink as well as berry tones and you have some gold and copper in there. It also has a pressed glitter that has a little bit of a chunkier texture. Not my favorite, but at least it's only one shade. Other than that, the shimmer shades are metallic finishes and the mattes feel really soft and really smooth. Then the other one that I got is called Nutmeg Paws, and this one has some greens, some golds, and neutral shades, basically warm neutrals. It also does have a pressed glitter. I think all three of them actually have a pressed glitter. I like this one better than the pink one. I just think it's a very wearable color story, and it definitely makes me think of Christmas time, I guess because of the red and green, and then also you have those neutrals to just balance everything out. And I did do a look with this palette, so I just wanted to show you quickly how it performed. And if I had to give these a rating, I would probably give them a six out of 10. They're slightly better than average, but there were a few things about them that I wasn't crazy about. The first thing is the pressed glitters. And if you like those, then you would probably give these a slightly better rating than I did, but I just don't use them, especially the chunky ones like this. I think these are the type of pressed glitters that we were seeing in palettes several years ago. And a lot of brands have since refined them and are are doing glitters in the form of toppers now. And I just feel like they're a little bit more eye safe to go that route than something like this. So I know that I'm not going to use those shades. Also, these are scented eyeshadows. They have a little bit of a berry scent, which I know is really not gonna to appeal to everybody. They don't bother me all that much, but I do prefer if it were unscented. And also, as far as the formula goes, there were a couple of shades in each palette that I felt like were duds. They were sort of hit or miss. Some of the shades were just beautiful and easy to pick up and very pigmented, while others I felt like I had to build up a lot or even wet them with setting spray. That's pretty much what I did with the shimmers in this palette because they just didn't go on quite as vibrantly as I was hoping they would. So for me, the formula was a little bit finicky on these, although I was able to make it work and to get a pretty eye look out of it. So I still wouldn't give these a completely negative review. Like I said, they're a little bit better than average. And then my final gripe with these is the packaging. It is so hard to open. I can't even open this one. If I stick my nail in here, I feel like I'm gonna break my nail. So I've been having to open this by sticking a really small pair of cuticle scissors in it and kind of popping it open that way because that's the only way I can get it to work. For some reason, the pink one is a little bit easier to open, but these are just very stiff overall and a pain in the neck. So I feel like I probably wouldn't reach for these as often as other palettes, just because I'm gonna look at this and think, now I have to go find something to pry it open. So that's also a big negative for me. But that being said, if you're on a budget and you're looking for a really cute eyeshadow palette under $10, these are pretty good. Next, also from Wet n Wild, they have these little cheek duos and there are three different ones to pick from. I chose this one specifically just because I thought the colors were beautiful, but the other ones looked really nice as well. So these are $6.99. The one that I got is called Holly Jolly Hop. The blush is in the shade Bright Pink and the highlighter is in the shade Soft Rose Gold. And I've always thought that Wet n Wild did blushes and highlighters really well. I've never had any complaints with them whatsoever. 
And I think these colors are absolutely stunning. I love that cool light pink. And also the highlighter is beautiful. It's very, very smooth. One thing that I do wanna mention is again, these are scented with that berry scent. So I'm assuming the whole collection is like that. If you're turned off by scented products, then you're probably gonna wanna skip these. But if I had to give these a rating, I would probably go with a nine out of 10. I really enjoyed this duo. And it's funny because on the Ulta website, I'm actually looking at it right now, and they have a three out of five. And the negative reviews are about the smell and also that the blush didn't seem very pigmented. And for me, that's actually a positive thing. I love a blush that I can slowly build up. I think because I'm more fair to light skinned, this is the type of blush that I just think is easier for me to use. And yes, I did have to kind of build this up in layers to get it to show, but when it did, I love that it actually stayed cool toned on me because a lot of blushes can look cooler in the pan. And then when I put them on my cheeks, they end up turning peachy or really warm. So I really love this color. I think it's beautiful. And then the highlighter was also a really beautiful formula. It's very, very smooth. It applies and picks up with a brush very easily. And when I look closely, it's not an overly glittery highlighter. There's a little bit of sparkle in there, but it's more of a refined pearlized look versus straight up glittery, which I prefer in a highlighter. So overall, these were a much bigger hit for me than the eyeshadow palettes were. I know not everybody's gonna agree based on the reviews that I've seen on the Ulta website, but I like these. And then the third thing that I got from the Wet n Wild collection is this liquid highlighter, and it comes with this adorable little sponge to apply it with. It's $9.99 for the set, and the highlighter is a white base that shifts from pink to purple and it is just super super stunning I actually would give this a 10 out of 10 as far as liquid highlighters go it is so smooth on the skin and it's a more natural looking highlighter which is what I'm always looking for it has no glitter or sparkle whatsoever it's more of a pearly sheen so I think that this looks incredibly high-end on the skin it just looks super seamless and I love that little bit of a shift that it has from pink to purple it just makes it slightly more interesting and it also shows up very cool toned on my skin as well which I love so again if you like a bolder highlight and something that really pops on the cheeks then you may not give it as high of a rating as I do but as somebody who really loves natural looking highlighters I think this is beautiful and it's a little something extra special for the holidays with this pretty shifting color so this is really nice next up NYX released a ton of new products for the holidays. They have advent calendars and gift sets. I only ended up getting two things. I got their new palette because I love this formula. And also I got a lip gloss gift set, which I'll show you guys next. But first let's just focus on the palette. So this is the ultimate palette in Flamingo Frost. I believe this is probably a limited edition for the holidays. And this retails for $20. You're getting 16 shades in here. So it's a little bit of a steeper price for a drugstore eyeshadow palette but so far I've had really good luck with these ultimate palettes with the new formula and I think this color story again is beautiful for the holidays you have some pinks that go anywhere from being brighter to more subtle dusty pinks you have some taupey shades in here of course the red and green for the holidays and then just a bunch of neutrals so one thing that I do want to mention though, and I'll just show you the palette up close, some of the shades have these red brackets around them. That means that they're face pigments, they're not considered eyeshadows. And there are four of those in this palette, the hot pink, this dusty pink down here, the red, and then this pink shimmer. So they do say that they're not approved for use in the eye area. They're supposed to be face pigments. Of course, this is an eyeshadow palette, so most people are not going to use these on the face. They're really small. Even if you wanted to get a face brush in there, you probably couldn't. But when it says that on palettes, it's because it's not approved for eye use in the United States. However, over in Europe, where they're very, very strict about cosmetics, face pigments have been approved 
approved for eye use. From what I understand, the United States or the FDA is just really backed up on approving things for cosmetics. So I think it's probably going to happen at some point. But the reason that some people run into issues is because colors like this, actual pigments can stain the skin. And in some people it can cause reactions. I've never had an issue with it at all, but it's just something to keep in mind. So I wanna quickly show you a look that I did with this palette and I did actually use some of those pigment shades. And as far as a rating goes with this palette, I would probably give it a seven out of 10. I felt like the matte shades applied beautifully. I have no issues with those at all. I think what disappointed me about this a little bit and why I knocked off a couple of points is the shimmer shades. I felt like I had to wet them with setting spray just to get them to show up. And even when I did, they still just didn't want to pop. They looked very subtle. And if that's something that you prefer in a palette, then I think you'll probably like this one more than I did. I just found the shimmer shades to be a little bit lackluster in this palette. Most most of them have that topper like feel where there's not as much pigment base and it's mostly just a wash of glitter. And my personal preference leans toward rich metallic shimmer shades over glittery toppers. So I think that's the biggest reason why I didn't absolutely love this palette, but I completely understand why they would add a lot of those glittery toppers because it's a holiday palette. It's supposed to be more festive. So it definitely makes sense. And I still think a seven out of 10 is again, it's a better than average rating. It's not a terrible palette by any means and I do think the color story is really pretty. The second thing is this butter gloss set because I love the butter glosses and this also includes some of the new swirly ones and I really wanted to try that formula. So this set retails for $60 and it includes 14 butter glosses so they work out to about $4.28 a piece which is less than if you buy them separately and I think this is a great gift idea whether you want to just give the whole set to somebody or break it up and use them as different stocking stuffers or even for yourself if you're someone like me who you just really like the butter glosses and you'd like to have a whole wardrobe of them then it's a great way to get them at a more discounted price and you really do get so many different colors to choose from. You have neutrals and brighter, bolder colors and everything in between. Today, I'm actually wearing two of these combined. I'm wearing Snow Cone, which is one of the new swirly purple ones. This was a little bit too purple on my lips though, so then I added strawberry cheesecake. I kind of mixed the two together and I love how it made a really cool toned lip. I know I'm always complaining about my lip products always pulling warm on me, just like the blushes do, even if it looks cool toned in the tube. So I thought maybe mixing purple in with the pink would help it to just be a little bit cooler. And I think it definitely worked. So I think these are such a nice formula. They're incredibly lightweight. They're not sticky. And some of these colors that I've been testing out over the past week or so stain your lips. So even after the shine wears away, you're still left with that color. So they're actually very long lasting for a lip gloss as well. I would give this set a 10 out of 10. If you're a fan of the butter gloss, especially. I think you'll love this. You have so many different colors to choose from with a really nice formula that's also unscented by the way and it's a good deal so what's not to like? Next up, LA Girl also released a new collection called Buphoria. So they have an eye and face palette, they have a bronzer and a highlighter. So I got all of those to try. Let's go ahead and start out with the um, palette first. This is $14.99, it has 12 shades, 10 of which are eyeshadows. And then you have two face colors, which are the larger pans. There's a blush and also a marbled highlighter that looks gold with kind of like some pink running through it. And I was really drawn to the color story of this one because you have some some cooler tones on one side of the palette and then warmer tones on the other. So you can do either or, or sometimes I actually like to mix warm and cool shades together and I think it's a really pretty look. But either way, it's a mostly neutral, very wearable palette if you're not somebody who loves color. There's a couple of colors in here, but it's nothing too bright or bold. But that being said, once I actually went to put this one on my eyes, I was a little bit disappointed. This is not LA Girl's normal eyeshadow formula. I think by now, if you're used to all of the different palettes that they come out with, they're pretty good. I would say one of the better formulas at the drugstore, but these just left me feeling a little bit disappointed. And if I were to give this one a rating, it would probably be like a five out of 10. This palette is just very average. Like I said, it's not the same as their regular formula that we all know and love. 
And I really didn't have too much issue with the matte shades. I felt like they applied well. They're not overly pigmented, but if you build them up, they apply smoothly and you can get some good color out of them. They apply really smoothly. They're easy to blend. So I feel like the mattes aren't really the issue. But again, like the other palettes, it comes down to the shimmer shades. There are some in here, there are two in particular that are glittery toppers. The other ones are not toppers, but they're still very difficult to pick up. I felt like I had to keep digging my finger into them repeatedly just to get some color. And they just went on very sheer. I had to wet them with setting spray to get them to pop on my eyes at all. So for me, this palette was a letdown and I'm giving it even a slightly lower rating than the Wet n Wild, even though I don't don't feel like this formula is worse than that one. This palette is $15 and the Wet n Wild ones are $7.99. So I think for $7.99, the formula is okay. But for what they're charging for this palette, I just don't see it. And I'm really knocking off an extra star for the price. I did feel like my eye look came out kind of pretty with this one. I don't mind it at all. And it is something that you can make it work if you want to, but it just didn't completely wow me. Also, when it comes to this blush, if you look at it in the pan, it looks like a really dusty, cool tone pink. But when I went to put this on my face, it turned peachy, which was so disappointing because I thought that this blush color looked absolutely beautiful when I saw it in the palette. So that was kind of another strike against this one as well. I don't know, it's not terrible, but it's just very, very average. And if you already have a lot of makeup, I, I feel like you can safely skip this one. Also in this collection is the Buphoria Highlighter. So this one is called Dazzle in a Daze and it's an iridescent highlighter powder. It's $9.99 and in the pan, it looks really pretty. It feels like it's a baked formula. It's pink, but it has these swirls of gold and champagne going through it. So it gives that marbled effect and when I swatched it out it did look very iridescent it's very bright and bold for a highlighter and when I was applying it I did feel like it went on very smoothly it picked up easily on the brush but when I looked at my skin close up it's very glittery unlike the wet and wild one that was more of a pearly look this one has those very obvious glitter particles which is not my personal taste so this one ranks pretty low on my list I would say I'd give it like a three out of 10. I mean, it's a decent formula, but it made my cheeks look so glittery and it just emphasized all my texture. So it's a no for me. But if you like glittery highlighters, then you'll probably enjoy this one because like I said, it is very smooth and it goes on really easily. And then the third product from LA Girl that I got, I was gonna say LA Colors, LA Girl, is the Buphoria Lustrous Bronzer. So this one is also $9.99 and it has two different bronzer shades in one. When I first got this home, I was afraid that these bronzers would be a little bit too warm on my skin tone, but once I swatched it out, I was pleasantly surprised. I swatched each one separately and then blended together and I actually like the color that they are blended. So when I went to apply this to my skin, that's what I did. I just swirled my brush around in both colors. And even though I was a little bit worried about this being too deep for me, it's a surprisingly sheer formula. And I thought that it blended out beautifully on my skin. It's not muddy. It's not overly powdery. Similar to the highlighter, I think this is also a baked formula. It's just very smooth. And I was impressed by how it went on. I would actually rate this one an eight out of 10. I think the formula is pretty. I thought that it looked nice on my skin. It's not my ideal color of bronzer, which is why I knocked off the two points, but I think it definitely warms up my face without looking orangey and it looks really smooth and undetectable on the skin. And even though they call it a lustrous bronzer, I really didn't sense any kind of a glow coming from this at all. It really just applies matte. So out of everything in the collection, I feel like this was the one that I was expecting to like the least and I actually like it the best. Next up, e.l.f. also has two new products that they just recently came out with. The first one is their lip oils. So these are called the Glow Reviver lip oil. These are $8 each and they do come in seven different colors, but I got four shades because the other three are clear or almost clear. And these at least 
according to the swatches on the e.l.f. website, looked like they were going to have the most pigment. And similar to the Dior lip oils, these have that big puffy applicator. It's pretty much the exact same shape. And when I swatched these out, they didn't look quite as pigmented on my arm as they did on the e.l.f. website. So I was feeling a little bit disappointed, but then when I actually put them on my lips, the color shows up pretty nicely. So I was excited about that. And these feel identical to the Dior. The texture is exactly the same. It's a medium weight lip oil. It's not something that's too thin or watery, but it's also not as thick as something like the NYX lip oils that have a little bit more weight to them. These are just the perfect in between. They have a cushiony feel. They're not super sticky, but they have just a little tiny bit of tack because they're a little thick. And even though in the description, these don't say anything about being a pH adjusting formula, the fact that it says Glow Reviver Lip Oil and then in the description, it says that it enhances your lips natural color. That makes me think they might be similar to the Dior. Here I have the Red Delicious shade and the Dior Cherry and they both have that really sheer, barely there kind of red color. And I noticed that when I put this color on my lips at first, it just hardly looked like anything. And then after a couple minutes, they did look a little bit deeper. So I think there might be some element of the pH adjusting thing in these, but I don't know if it's just in this one. I couldn't really tell with the colored ones because they already go on like color, so it was hard to see. But for all the things that I really love about this formula, there are two things that are pretty much deal breakers for me one more than the other. So the first one and kind of the lesser of the two is that these have a minty scent. I don't hate a minty scent, but I usually avoid lip glosses that have it because whatever kind of minty oil they put in here, like if it's peppermint oil or whatever it is that gives that scent, I find that it always makes my lips feel really dry after using them for a while. Not at first, but if I wear a minty scented gloss continuously, I start to notice that my lips start peeling and looking chapped. There's just something about it that reacts to me. So I generally try to stay away from any anything that has a minty scent. And the second thing is that I think I might react to something in this formula because when I put these on, they make my lips feel numb, similar to the CoverGirl Yummy Glosses. And I loved those at first too. I felt like the formula was actually pretty similar to this one, but after a couple minutes, I start to notice this weird tingly feeling and then my lips just kind of go numb, almost like when you get Novocaine at the dentist's office. And I don't think that's normal. So I'm guessing I must be reacting to something that's in this formula and that's in that one. It doesn't feel like that tingly feeling of a plumping gloss. It's just this really weird kind of unsettling type of a feel. So I would personally have to rate these pretty low, like a two or a three out of 10, because I'm just not gonna wear something that makes my lips feel that way. But if that wasn't happening, I would probably give these like an eight out of 10 and just knock off a couple points for the minty scent. I think most of you, if you don't react to these, you're probably going to love the texture because I think they really did a great job duping the Dior ones. But if I had to pick between the two, I would pick the Dior one just because I don't react to it or even the NYX ones. I love these two. They're a little bit thicker. I do think the e.l.f. ones feel slightly nicer on the lips than these, but I think these are wonderful as well. So kind of disappointed about the e.l.f. lip oils. And then they also just released new duochrome shades of their liquid eyeshadows. And I really enjoy their liquid eyeshadow formula. I think they're one of the better ones at the drugstore. So I was very, very excited to see these pop up. I don't know if these are gonna become permanent or if they're just a limited edition holiday thing, but I thought these looked really pretty. So I bought all three to try. So these retail for $8 and they have a beautiful color shifting metallic finish and I really love this formula because once it sets down it doesn't crease it doesn't budge they're very long lasting on the eyes one thing I did notice that you might have seen in the swatches is that the cyber pink shade feels a little bit different than the other two the other two were very ultra pigmented and a little bit smoother going on and the cyber pink one is a little bit more sheer and it has a little more glitter in it so it almost functions as a topper versus the others, which just were a little bit more solid. But on the 
eyes. I think these look beautiful. I would give them a solid eight out of 10. The only thing I would knock off points for is just because liquid eyeshadows can be a little bit tricky to use and these are no exception, although I do think they're somewhat easier to use than other formulas that I've tried. You can really just swipe these right on with the applicator and then just take a little brush and blend along the top edge to make it more seamless and you're good to go. But if you touch these with your finger at all, they do kind of lift off and they can get a little bit patchy. And if your eyelids aren't perfectly smooth, these can also just look a little bit chunky and patchy in areas. So there is a little bit of a learning curve with these. And I find that on my 45 year old eyelids, they don't always look the smoothest. So even though I tried these on alone in the demo, I much prefer to wear these just as like a little accent on top of other powder shadows. I think they look a little bit better that way it's harder to make them look natural and blended when they're just on their own so that's why I knocked off a couple of points but otherwise I think they're very long lasting and they're a really nice liquid formula then moving on to ColourPop I have a couple of palettes to share the first one is actually the re-release of the Rudolph palette so this one was launched last year I believe and I didn't get it last year but they sent it to me this year in PR to try they re-released it I believe it's at Ulta and also at at Target and you can find these in store. I haven't seen it at Target yet. I haven't been there in a while, but I did see it at Ulta over the weekend. And this palette is really, really cute. I love the packaging. Rudolph is one of my favorite Christmas movies, always has been. So I might be a little bit biased when it comes to that, but I just love the outer packaging. And then inside, I don't find the color story to be super remarkable. It has some warm neutrals. And again, you have the pops of red and green to go along with Christmas time. You have a pretty pink shimmer in there, but this color story doesn't really thrill me and it's not something that I would have run right out and purchased if they hadn't sent it to me in PR because I have these colors a million times over in other palettes. But that being said, the formula as always is really nice. I think ColourPop really excels when it comes to their shimmer shades because they have that smooth, rich metallic finish that I am always looking for when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. And out of all of the different palettes that we've looked at today from the drugstore, these shimmers were the easiest to work with. They picked up on my finger without a problem and they went on smoothly and nicely pigmented. So I would give this palette a nine out of 10 as far as formula goes but when I consider the color story I would probably knock it down to maybe a six or seven out of ten just because I, I don't think that this is something extra special unless you are a huge fan of Rudolph and you want to get it just for the nostalgia most likely almost all of us have these colors already in our collection so I don't think it's anything super unique even though the formula is really nice but that brings me to probably my favorite product of the video and we save this until the very end. It's the ColourPop Cloud 9 palette. So this one, oh my goodness. I saw this at Ulta in store and I bought it immediately. This palette right here is a cool toned lover's dream. So forget the Natasha Denona Xenon palette because that's just a bunch of shades of gray. This one has the variety that I'm looking for. It has some gray and it has some taupe. It also has the silvers that have a little bit of a bluish tint to them. It has purple. It even has a pinky shade that shifts to lavender. It's just so soft and so beautiful. I would actually give this palette a 10 out of 10. The formula feels even better than the Rudolph palette. I think the shimmers in this one just pop a little bit more and the matte shades as always, super blendable. And then of course you have the color story, which is just right up my alley. I love it so much. It's what I'm wearing in the video today. So this one was definitely a big hit for me and definitely the thing that I'm most excited about out of everything that I tried today. So that's all I have for today's video, but I do have more new drugstore makeup on the way to my house right now so my next video should include the new products from Revlon that I'm really, really excited about, new liquid eyeshadows from CoverGirl, new lip products from Maybelline. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. If you're not subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you have some extra time and you'd like to check out some more of my videos, I'll go ahead and put one right here for you to check out next. And I wanna thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I really, truly appreciate it. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Take care guys, bye.